I have an announcement to make at the end of this video. But first, let's evaluate this sum. <laughs> so we have sine of 1 degree plus sine of 2 degrees plus sine of 3 degrees plus all the way until sine of 89 degrees. So can you find a nice closed expression for this sum? <laughs> Maybe we can use some sort of angle identity and that will help us out. Maybe. But I want to focus on a solution that involves complex numbers. Yes, you heard me right. If that surprised you even by a little, then watch this video. It's going to be very interesting. And this complex number method actually helps generalize this sum pretty well. I'll tell you what I mean later. So how do we relate sine to some sort of complex expression? Well, you might recall Euler's formula. e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. Now, from this, we can plug in negative theta. So if we switch theta to be negative theta, then this would be e to the negative i theta. And then this would be cosine of negative theta. So that's cosine of negative theta. And then plus i sine of negative theta. But cosine is an even function. So cosine of negative theta is just equal to cosine of theta. <laughs> and notice that this negative theta in the sine, sine is an odd function, so you can take out the negative, and this would become, this would become minus i sine theta. And what is so cool about this? Well, notice that if you were to, if you were to add these two equations, then you would get e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta. This is equal to, well, the i sine theta is cancel out because this is plus and then minus. And over here, we have 2 cosine theta, 2 cosine theta. And we can divide both sides by 2, showing us that cosine of theta can be written as e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta, and then divided by 2. Similarly, if we were to take these two equations, and instead of adding them, if we subtracted them, then that's going to be e to the i theta minus e to the negative i theta. This would be equal to, well, the cosines cancel out, and over here we have 2i sine theta, showing us that we can write the sine of theta as e to the i theta and then minus e to the negative i theta, and then divided by, oh, sorry, and then divided by 2i. Now, as you might have guessed, we're going to be making this substitution because this looks a lot more algebraically manageable than this, right? So we're going to make this substitution into this sum. Okay, so notice that all of the terms in our sum is of the form sine of n degrees, where n is some positive integer from 1 to 89. Now, we just proved that this is equal to I'm going to leave some space because I want to write something here later. So this is equal to e to the i n degrees minus e to the negative i n degrees and then divided by 2i. And notice that if you, if you focus on what we want here, we want the sum as n ranges from 1 to 89. So what we can do is we can take the sum as n goes from 1 up to 89 on both sides, right? We can just take the summation on both sides, like this. Now, notice that this is what we want, but it's equal to this. And this is going to be easier to evaluate. Check this out. <laughs> Firstly, we can factor out this 1 over 2i out of the summation. So it's equal to 1 over 2i, and then times the sum as n goes from 1 up to 89 of e to the i n degrees minus e to the negative i n degrees. And now we can distribute this summation to each of the terms, each of the individual terms. So this will be equal to 1 over 2i and then times the sum as n goes from 1 up to 89 of e to the i n degrees and then minus the sum as n goes from 1 up to 89 of e to the negative i n degrees. Now, if I perhaps write each of these terms as 
e to the negative i times 1 degree raised to the power of n. And similarly here, if I write this as e to the i times 1 degree raised to the power of n, if I do this, then notice that notice that each of these individual summations are just geometric sums. They are just geometric series. And we know how to evaluate a geometric series. We can just plug it in into the geometric sum formula. But I'm going to make one little fix before we do that, just so that the formula will produce nicer numbers. And you'll see why in a second. I'm going to consider the sum from n going to 0, well, starting from 0, for each of these. And here's the thing. I don't have to make any modifications. I can literally just change this and go on. And the reason is because if I were to go back to here, and if I were to switch n to be beginning at 0, then notice that the first term is sine of 0 degrees. And sine of 0 degrees is 0. So we're not really adding any quantity. So it doesn't matter. So we can literally switch to n equals to 0 and just don't care. <laughs> so now we can plug this in into the geometric sum formula. So this will be equal to 1 over 2i. And then geometric sum formula. For this sum, the first term is just e to the i 1 degree to the 0th power. That's just 1. So right off the bat, that's a very nice number. We don't even have to write it. And then the common ratio is e to the i 1 degree. And then we have to raise it to the 90th power, right? And notice that if we had instead done n equals to 1, then we would have, we would have had to raise it to the 89th power. But 90th power, well, 90 degrees, that's a really good angle. And then we minus 1, and then divided by e to the i 1 degree, and then minus 1. There we go. And the second summation is very similar. Uh, notice that the first term is again 1, so that works out nicely. And then we just have e to the i, well, e to the negative i 1 degree to the 90th power. Okay. And then minus 1, and then divided by e to the negative i 1 degree and then minus 1. And there we have it. <laughs> now, from here, we don't really have a lot to do other than just combine the fractions. So I'm not going to bore you with the details. It's just combining fractions. So I'm going to skip to it. OK, so this is what we have. <laughs> um, the numerator was a little bit too big to fit on one line. But it's OK because we're going to clean this up anyways. Notice that we have a bunch of e to the i 90 degrees and e to the negative i 90 degrees up here. Well, this is actually a very nice complex number. If you take this formula and you plug in theta to be 90 degrees, then you would get cosine 90 degrees and then plus i sine 90 degrees. Cosine 90 degrees is 0. And i sine 90 degrees, well, sine 90 degrees is 1. So that's 1 times i. So e to the i 90 degrees, that's just 1. So we can literally replace all of this with just the imaginary unit, i. And uh, I could have saved a lot more space if I, just, if I had just explained that earlier. <laughs> and notice that we have e to the negative i 90 degrees. Well, just plug in theta to be negative 90, and you'll see that it falls out to be negative i. So this over here, that's just negative i. And notice that over here, yet again, this is just minus i. And there we have it. Now, notice that this negative 1 and plus 1, they cancel out, right? So we can just erase them. And now we can do a little bit of grouping. Notice that this is equal to 1 over 2i. And then times, I'm going to group the terms like this. I'm going to group this with, with, where's my term? With this, OK? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to group these two terms. Firstly, this negative, negative, that becomes plus, right? So we don't need that double negative. So this and this, let's group that. And let's factor out the i while we're at it. So that's i times e to the negative i 1 degree. And then here we just have times, I should remove this bracket over here, and then times plus e to the i 1 degree, right? And we're going to group again by doing this with this. So this is plus e to the i 1 degree and then minus e to the i negative i 1 degree. And then we have, we have a minus i and then minus i. That's minus 2i. And then finally, at the bottom, we can have 2 minus 2, not 2. I'm making a lot of mistakes. I'm sorry. As I was saying, 
2 and then minus, you can take out the negative sign, so that's e to the i 1 degree, and then plus e to the negative i 1 degree. And there you go. Now, this expression is actually better. And the reason for this is because we can actually use these formulas to help us simplify this. Check this out. Notice that, notice that this over here very much resembles the formula for the cosine expression, right? Only that, if you take a look at this one, only that this over here has theta replaced with one degree, right? So actually, this thing underlined in red is just equal to two cosine of one degree. So I'm going to write, that, write out the entire thing. So let me write that equal sign a bit better. This is equal to one over two i, and then times i times two cosine of one degree, right? And similarly, Notice that this expression over here, this part is literally the sine formula, this one over here in particular, except that theta is replaced with one degree once again. So this is just equal to 2i sine of one degree and minus 2i, right? This 2i over here. <laughs> and then we have divided by 2 minus, well, look at this. This, again, is just this over here, but theta is, degree, is uh, replaced with one degree. So this over here is just two cosine of one degree. And there we have it. This is at least a little bit better than this, right? <laughs> and now we can multiply one over two i into the expressions. Conveni conveniently enough, notice that this two i in the denominator will cancel out all of these two i's over here. So actually, this entire expression is just equal to uh, cosine of one degree and then plus sine of one degree and then minus one and then divided by two minus two cosine of one degree. And there we have it. I guess you can maybe simplify a little bit better, but who cares? This is kind of already better than this. And it's a pretty good closed form. So yeah, I'll just take this as the answer. And there we have it. This, this will be my answer to this sum. Um, yeah, I hope you found that very interesting. Uh, this complex number solution is very powerful. And as I said, it's a good way to generalize this sum. And I'll show you what I mean now. If instead we were dealing with sine to the n power of 1 degree plus sine to the nth power of 2 degrees plus all the way to sine to the nth power of 89 degrees, can you find a general closed form in terms of n? Now, if you were just d using trigonometric identities, I don't think it would be that easy. Anyways, thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it interesting, then please do consider dropping a like and subscribing. Thank you very much. Bye. Oh yeah, an announcement. If you want to hear it, then stick around. Firstly, this is not my house. This is an office, so whenever I want to record, I have to travel, which takes time, and I don't want that. So I'm trying to create a setup in my house that will enable me to record whenever I want. So the location, the setup is going to change soon. Secondly, I've been working on a document called Mathematical Problems for Enrichment. It's basically a collection of problems which I've gone over in my past videos and I've just put them into one portable format so that you can access them and work on them whenever you want without having to consult my videos in like a car or something so that's that <laughs> I've also been uh, writing a solutions document for them so you'll be able to know how I sound on paper I've also been including some problems which I've proposed but never used in any video and I really don't want the effort to go to waste so I'm just going to include them in the document as well for you to enjoy. <laughs> and I'm just, as of right now, I'm just doing some last, last few checks just to make sure everything is correct before I release them to the public. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. I'm going to be making a video about this anyway. That video is going to address some changes, but mainly the document because I really want to spread mathematical enrichment. Anyways, yeah, subscribe. <laughs>